human factors is quite a broad discipline and it encompasses lots of different types of psychology that you would normally find in the workplace. So we draw on techniques that are used by occupational psychologists, by um, organisational so psychologists. Um, we draw heavily on um, sort of ergonomics and anthropometry, which is all to do with sort of the design of the physical world and how you design systems and interfaces to suit people's physical capabilities and limitations. More formally, it sort of sprang out of World War II when we started developing more complex kind of interfaces to do with tanks and control panels, these kinds of things. That's when the science really started drawing more upon psychology to help inform the designs of, of this kind of equipment. One of the main drivers for human factors in the last 20 years in particular has been sort of some big high profile um, events. So. The, the events that happened at Piper Alpha, that happened at Deepwater Horizon more recently, some, some big train crashes at Paddington and, and Hatfield. These are, these are situations that have arisen because of the actions of people. Human factors is sort of historically based around fitting the, the task to the person, whereas within occupational psychology, maybe the focus is more around fitting the person to the task. Um, so the focus upon training and recruitment and um, the lines of career that often follow into human resources and strategy and those kinds of things, um, and especially around selection and psychometric testing. With organisational psychology, um, the focus there is often more upon organisational structures, so thinking about, more about how organisations work than, than individuals work. Um, but from a human factors point of view, we touch on, on all, the, all those three different points. They say, I know human resources, which is not <laughs> not even close. Explaining what I do for a living is, is a nightmare. Um, it depends on who you're talking to. People think human resources. The other misconception that's common with human factors is that it's all common sense. There's a huge body of, of psychology that sits behind how our brain functions and how it affects our performance on a daily basis. So it's, it's not as simple as people say. There's no fixed formal formal routine. I had a PhD from Cardiff and I had some sort of relevant background and research in that which which helped to kind of open the door. Um, other people that we've had we hired recently have come straight from psychology degrees. We also have people coming from engineering backgrounds and design backgrounds. Um, there are also um, uh, human factors degrees that you can do and there's uh, maybe five or six of them in the country at the moment. Um, then ideally you would get um, some work experience um, as close to human factors or occupational psychology um, as possible ideally um, but that's not necessary. Um, then the majority of people do go on to do a master's, you can do a master's in human factors or um, a related discipline like occupational psychology. Um, for me I didn't do a master's but that's generally I think the norm that you do. Really try and make an effort to get a placement. Um, so try and find companies that you can go and work for and, and do, some, do some work in some holidays. Um, and to really be proactive in making contacts with people, expressing an interest. Um, because having two or three weeks worth of work experience on your CV and to be able to talk about um, your experience of doing some basic human factors analysis, doing a human error analysis or a task analysis or safety critical tasks, these, these kinds of things are really, really help the discussions that you have when you have an interview. There's kind of two routes really, you can go down the psychology route and have a look and talk to the BPS um, and their focus really is upon occupational psychology and they can help you towards sort of the chartership elements there. Um, Thinking more about sort of the broad collection of, of, of work that we do in human factors, there's the IEHF, the Institute of Ergonomics and Human Factors, um, and you can follow that path there and you can use their resources um, and you can sort of build up a career portfolio which will get you through the various different stages of accreditation and membership with the IEHF. So at the moment I have five or six different projects on, two in the transport industry, two in oil and gas and a mining project. I can be travelling, so next week I'm going to the Middle East for a, for a week and a half to go and spend some time with a client 
and run some workshops with them. The week after that, I think I'm in the office and, and then I have meetings in London for two days that week. So that's kind of my life. I'm a senior consultant, so my responsibilities are all in and around managing projects, managing teams of people working on projects. You might be going out to client sites and you might be facilitating workshops there and they could be on lots of different topics. They might involve site visits where you're going around maybe chemical plants or mines or you're at a level crossing. So to give you an example, we have one starting in the next week or so, which uh, is for a rail company. Um, and we're effectively trying to help them understand whether it's worth them spending um, a relatively large amount of money to improve um, safety at uh, level crossings. Um, by putting in this new type of equipment. And so we've had to design like a before and after study, so very hypothesis driven, and we've tried to really, really be specific on what types of behavior this new piece of equipment will affect. So we take video analysis before and we compare it to the picture afterwards and we look at the behavior change over time. Other things we may do are to write documents or standards to help people in complex jobs manage their work more safely can be coaching or training people in how to have difficult conversations around safety. Primarily cognitive psychology, we might look at things like um, how people make decisions, um, how their perception influences their behaviour. Um, we might look at social psychology in some of the cultural work we do. I'm using my notes from the cognition and perception modules from the um, attitudes and behaviour modules that I study quite regularly. Um, so uh, this week alone we've been looking at eye tracker studies. Um, uh, we've been using a theory of planned behaviour, so all very attitudes and behaviour. My background being in more sort of cognitive and experimental psychology, I think about decision making, so Kahneman and Tversky, heuristics, nudge theory. Um, I'm thinking about working memory theory, um, Badley and company, I'm thinking about um, visual perception, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, it's used on a daily basis. Often we go into companies and industries where you're expected to be knowledgeable. So I can go to um, uh, work for an oil and gas company for a bit and they'll expect me to know in depth about the um, processes they use when they're drilling new wells offshore. Now, I can learn a bit about that on the internet and I can try and do my best to, to get up to speed with it and ask sensible questions. Um, but sometimes it's, it's hard work when, when you're not an expert in an area but you'd like to be. If you're working... Um, on lots of different projects, which we usually are, sometimes the deadlines seem to happen at the same day, at the same time, and it's hard, you feel like sometimes you're spinning plates. Um, but you get used to that and you get very good at planning your time. You get to travel in the UK, but also internationally. This year I've been to Israel, which is a place I never thought I'd go, and it was amazing. We have the luxury often of, of sitting down and getting to the bottom of problems and, and providing solutions that people have never ever thought of before, which is great, especially when it works. You can really make a difference, and it's not just about health and safety, um, which I think has sort of got bad connotations. Everyone thinks health and safety jobs are really boring. We work in high hazard environments, so essentially those people that you're working with, you could help save their lives. Um, and that, <laughs> that isn't an exaggeration, I think that's really true.